to be asked to serve as a special advisor to the Vice President for Europe and Russia. Over the past eight months, I have been privileged to work with the dedicated and capable men and women of the Office of the Vice President to advance the administration's agenda. I have also worked closely with talented and committed colleagues at the National Security Council, State Department, Department of Defense. Marcus Conti reporting. How you doing? So we're going to look at some of the the latest in the gaslighting. America hasn't been gaslighted enough. So it's day three of the impeachment. Impeach Trump, the orange monster. Get rid of him. You have to get rid of him. Why? Because he's bad. He's bad. He's a bad man. Uh, so they're swearing in the um, swearing in some on new April twenty first candidates. Volodymyr right Zelensky. So a live television Trump impeachment hearing and uh, live stream. <laughs> Again, there's no. <laughs> you can watch it if you want. I mean, it's entertainment. But we already know what the vote is. The vote is going to be, you know, uh, slightly in favor of the Democrats. So you could expect uh, impeachment in the House. So what's going on? Trump impeachment hearing live stream. Uh, also talk about uh, uh, amazingly Sweden has dropped its uh, rape charge on Julian Assange. That's breaking news. And uh, two jail guards, the jailers of Epstein, the two guys that fell asleep, <laughs> allegedly fell asleep while they were watching Epstein, have been uh, arrested. So are they throwaways? We'll take a look at that uh, story. But let's look at this, this right here. So Trump impeachment hearing. Um, all right, so Lieutenant uh, Alex... Relayed that I'll instruction take, to others involved. Off. So another one is going to be the, this is uh, w Williams, I don't know who this is. So uh, Colonel Alex uh, Alexander Vidman, the national security uh, official, and Jennifer Williams, an aide to Vice President Pence, have arrived at the Capitol on Tuesday morning to testify in the third public hearing inquiry into Trump. Uh, Vidman and Williams listened in to the July 25th phone call between Trump and his Ukraine counterpart in which the president called for an investigation of former uh, Vice President Joe Biden and his son Hunter. So the infamous phone call apparently was listened into, the one that we have the transcript of already. We already have it. All right, so these two, these two knuckleheads were in on the conversation not sure how it's going to go. Right? We don't know if it's going to go in favor of Trump or against Trump, but it doesn't matter because the Republicans will ask questions that favor Trump and they'll get the answer they're looking for. And the Democrats and Adam Schiff will answer derogatory questions about the president and get those answers that they're looking for. And they'll all draw their own conclusions. If you're a Democrat, you draw the conclusion that Trump is guilty as sin. If you're a Republican, Trump did nothing wrong. So and because the Democrats have the majority of the vote, the president of the United States will be impeached in the House of Representatives. And because there isn't a majority uh, to do such in the Senate, Trump will walk. Right. So so that's that. These two people are going to talk. Let's look at uh, Epstein. We'll come back and we'll talk about this. So, well, you know what? Let's look at Hong Kong first. Look at some... I don't have much on Hong Kong except these riveting images. So <clears throat> Hong Kong is still on fire. Right? It's the young people speaking out. Right? The young people are pissed the fuck off, man. And they don't want to live a life. Um, they don't want to live a life, uh, you know, imprisoned by the Chinese. Right? This could happen here, too. See, when people, smart thinking people that had a taste of freedom, a taste of democracy for a hundred years, hundreds of years, their entire life was, was free and prosperous to some degree. You know, they speak fluent, you know, English, they're, they're allowed to travel. <laughs> and suddenly those rights were taken away from them, just like it's happening here. It's happening slowly, right? It's crabs in the pot here. You know, the pot, the, boil, the water's starting to boil. But the young people in Hong Kong know intuitively that they cannot be, uh, if they succumb to Chinese rule, if they fold to Chinese authority, uh, that they will be, that they're, the, the nation that they know, that they were born into, the history of their, their uh, place called Hong Kong, will be gone forever. They know that. So they're fighting their asses off. 
mostly young people. Some of my Chinese friends say that the uh, some of the protesters are they're like high school. They have nothing to lose, man. To them, it's civil war. Can it happen here? Can it happen here? Bet your fucking ass it could happen here. Police and riot gear, right? These guys are like kung fu fucking guys, too. They come flying with sticks and bats and tackle you. and These are riveting images, man. You always got to marvel at how the police are so well equipped with guns and bats and helmets and you know, they got shin guards and elbow guards and you know and all kinds of shit, man. And fucking look at the look at the look at the pedestrians. No helmet, no shin guards. He's got a pair of gloves. He's got a you know just getting tackled, getting tackled. Uh, his umbrella. He's got an umbrella, protecting himself with an umbrella. Uh, Cocktail bombs, Molotov cocktails, are the are the weapon of choice amongst protesters. It's a, basically a bottle with a rag. Fill the gas with a rag. You take a match, you light it, and you fling it. And that's essentially what they're doing. Molotov cocktail bombs, right? You wouldn't want to get hit with one of those things. That's for sure. So here's the. Uh, Look at the look at the quality of their helmets. Those are like little shit shit construction helmets. Uh, umbrellas, got you know it's, it's crazy. Oh, I got punched in the face. They'll punch me. Uh, so tear gas is fired by police and protesters attempting to escape. Apparently, they're taking over universities. They're blockading their way in. You know, and. Um, it's pretty crazy, right? So it's war in the street, you know. It's, I, I, I think the, the story is fascinating, and it doesn't seem to be really of interest in the United States. I know we're, 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 I put these videos up with Hong Kong is on fire, and and a, a couple of hundred people look at it. Right? What you put up something about you know grifters or or Epstein and fucking or Hillary Clinton, and you get two three thousand views. It's crazy. This matters. This is this is a democracy on fire, right? Young people in in shorts and you know and and uh, you know little cheesy masks, trying to trying to fight off the the Chinese empire. It's their own government doing it. It's not just the Chinese. I mean, it's it's the uh, Chinese. Let's see what's going on over here. Oh, here's the here's the other guy. And extended an invitation to visit the White House. In May, I attended the inauguration of President Zelensky as part of the presidential delegation led by Secretary Perry. Following the visit, the members of the delegation provided President Trump a debriefing off. So these are, those are just opening statements, and uh, Adam Schiff will probably go first. Devin Nunes will probably speak second. And we know what they're going to say. We already, I already heard their opening statements. It was, it was identical. Schiff believes that the president is, is the most corrupt president that has ever walked the face of the earth. And uh, Devin Nunes is like, what? There's nothing to see here. This is a charade and a, and a hoax, right. just like Trump. Who's true? What's true? Well, there's probably truth to, you know, both of them. But So let's talk about Julian Assange. Julian Assange, still in jail, still in uh, Belmarsh Prison in, in uh, London, England, a maximum security prison being held for what? No charges. No charges. He was already he already served his sentence for bail jumping and was technically released from those charges on parole. Right? So he should be out. But because the United States has a frivolous indictment hanging over his head, he can't get out. So and there was something else. Remember the Sweden thing? Oh, he raped a woman in Sweden. Well, uh, shows time has shown that that's not true. Sweden drops rape investigation into Julian Assange. Sweden has closed its rape investigation at the WikiLeaks founder, Julian Assange, saying that the evidence against him is not strong enough for an indictment. Good. While all investigative steps have been taken in this case, including additional interviews with Assange, the evidence does not prove he committed a criminal act, according to the prosecutor. The prosecution authority added that oral testimony in the case had weakened which is natural over time. The decision can be appealed. Sweden had uh, previously dropped the case against Assange in 2017, announcing that, quote, 
given that all options for moving the investigation toward uh, forward are now exhausted, it appears that in light of the views expressed by the no longer uh, the Supreme Court on the proportional... <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, the, the bottom line is that Assange is uh, no longer... There has been considerable political pressure on Sweden to reopen their investigation. Uh, Assange avoided extradition to Sweden for seven years after he sought refuge at the Ecuadorian embassy in London in 2012. The 48-year-old publisher was kicked out in May and was sentenced to 50 weeks in jail for breaching his bail conditions. Uh, so he still he is he is currently being held at Belmarsh Prison in London where he faces extradition to the United States on 17 charges related to his working, his work obtaining top-secret U.S. national security information. With Chelsea Manning, he faces 175 years. 16 of those 17 charges are for publishing. Right? Straight up, when you read the indictment, it's for, it's for working with a source and publishing information. It's, they've made the federal government under Trump is trying to make publishing of classified documents illegal right? so that the government can shoot people from the sky, shoot people from their gunships and, and gun down people in times of war and say, oh, no, no, that was, uh, that's what we do. No, no, there's nothing to see here, right? And if, you, if anybody talks about it, we'll throw you in jail for 30 years or 175 years. So, so let's go back. So that's, uh, let's see what... Excuse. Cities, yeah, regions, opening. socioeconomic backgrounds. Still opening statements. Let's watch a little bit. Let's see, hear what he has to say. So this guy was on the call with Trump. The infamous call where he says, can you do me a favor, Trump? Can you do me a favor? Look into this corruption for us. I know. What, what about the server? <laughs> CrowdStrike. Right. Trump throwing that shit out there. Why, why you got to talk to... What a, what a sick state of uh, uh, our government... Our law enforcement, where you have to ask Ukraine, the Ukrainian people, to find out about evidence that should be on the ground here in the United States. CrowdStrike, right? An outside organization that Hillary Clinton and the DNC hired to, to uh, snow job, to stick a knife in Trump's back, to paint a picture of Russian espionage inside of the inside of the servers where the FBI was never given a chance to look at it. And if they did, they would have said, oh, no, no, there's Russian hacks. Russian hacks, right? right. Com you know, complacency, the, the, in, the unwillingness of the FBI to investigate is, is uh, evidence enough that... Um, I also recognize that, they, that my simple act of appearing... That they were, uh, in fact, complicit in the crime, right? They were, they were involved, right? Because, again, Comey, McCabe, uh, Stroke, Strokes, Page, right? All those people, right? They were involved in the cover-up, right? Yeah, yeah, CrowdStrike said, uh, you know, Russians, Russian ER, GRU agents swooped in, 12 of them, Facebook ads, right? Oh, yeah, big Russian shit, right? And it turns out to be nothing, right? Absolutely fucking nothing, right? And that's where we are right now. That's what these guys are trying to do, right? That was Russia Gate. Now it's Ukraine Gate. Pull another, another piece of bullshit out of your hat, and uh, try to pin it on Trump, right? Try to just get him out, man. Get that power struggle. Rig that election. This is the big move. This is the big move. The big move covers the little move. Right? The big move is impeach. The little move is rig those Democratic primaries so that we get the same. We get the same Trump or worse, a corrupt Democrat. Worse, worse for us, not worse for the Democrats. Democrats love that shit. So uh, his, his shifty shift. Grateful to have them with us. We'll his shifty shift. Questions as detailed in the memo provided to committee members. There'll be 45 minutes of questions conducted by the chairman or majority council, followed by 45 minutes for the ranking member or minority council. Under House Resolution 660, that time may not be delegated to other members. Following that, unless I specify an additional equal time for extended questioning, we will proceed under the five-minute rule, and every member will have a chance to ask questions. I now recognize myself or Majority Counsel for the first uh, 45 minutes. Before we get into the uh, substance of your testimony, Ms. Williams, 
45 minutes of Adam Schiff. You ready for that? I'm not. Number 18th. Um, were you on that call? I was. And did you take notes of the call? Yes, sir. Is there something about that call that you think may be relevant to our investigation? Mr. Chairman, uh, as we previously discussed with the committee, the office of the vice president has taken the position that the September could you, 18th... Sir, could you move the microphone a little closer to you? As we've previously discussed with both majority and minority staff of the committee, the office of the vice president has taken the position that the September 18th call is classified. As a result, with respect to the call, I'd refer the committee to the public record, which includes Ms. Williams' November 7th testimony, which has been publicly released, as well as the public readout of that call, which has previously been issued by the White House. Um, beyond that, given the position of the Vice President's Office on classification, I've advised Ms. Williams not to answer further questions about that call in an unclassified setting. Wow, so there, you just got shut down, man. Thank you, Counsel. Uh, Ms. Williams, I would only ask you in this setting whether you think there's something relevant to our inquiry in that call, and whether, if so, you'll be willing to make Adam Schiff just got shut down, down, man. I would also refer to my, my testimony that I gave uh, in the closed session, and I'm very happy to appear for a classified setting uh, discussion as well. Um, it may not be necessary for you to appear if you'll be willing to submit uh, the information in writing to the committee. I'd be happy to do so. Uh, thank you. Nothing. Nothing! Your attention to the April 21st call, that is the first call between President Trump and President Zelensky. Did you pair, prepare uh, talking points uh, for the president to use during that call? Yes, I did. Uh, and did those talking points include uh, rooting out corruption in Ukraine? Yes. That was something the president was supposed to raise in the conversation with President Zelensky? Those were the recommended to talking points um, that were cleared through the NSC staff for the president, yes. Uh, did you listen in on that call? Yes, I did. The White House has now released the uh, record of that call. Uh, did President Trump ever mention corruption in the April 21st call? To the best of my recollection, he did not. Uh, on the April 21st call, uh, President Trump uh, told President Zelensky that he would send a high-level U.S. delegation to the inauguration. Uh, following that call, uh, Ms. Williams, was your understanding that the President wanted the Vice President to attend the inauguration in Kyiv? Yes, that was my understanding. And did the President subsequently tell the Vice President not to attend the inauguration? I was informed by our Chief of Staff's office, by the Vice President's Chief of Staff's office, that the President had told the Vice President not to attend. I did not witness that conversation. And... All right, you're not going to get anything out of these two. Adam Schiff, swing and a miss. Swing, bada, 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 swing, bada, bada. So that's the end of that. So impeachment, uh, Schiff is going to dig. He's going to, you know, the, the woman is not going to speak, obviously, right? And, and the other guy is going to say the same shit. It's classified. So according to them, the, the, the call was classified. If you want to talk to us, you got to do it in a in a... In a classified setting. <laughs> what a waste of time. What a waste of time. So let's see if these two jailers. Oh, did I talk about Epstein? I forgot about Epstein. Fuck. Um, I, just, I forgot all about Epstein. So let's talk about Epstein. So two jailers arrested over Jeffrey Epstein's suicide. Did I talk about him? No, I didn't. I talked about Hong Kong. I talked about Assange. The two jailers. So let's talk about that before we go. So quickly, uh, two jail guards arrested over Jeff Jeffrey Epstein's suicide. Uh, two correction officers tasked with guarding Jeffrey Epstein at the same at the time of his suicide have been arrested. Sources said Tuesday. <laughs> uh, this is a throwaway. This is a throwaway gun. Ah, look over here. Yeah, the two guys, they fell asleep. Uh, they're scapegoats. They are patsies. The, the people, you know, maybe the cops did fall asleep, but maybe they were put in there, you know, maybe they were drugged. Maybe they were, 
They were, you know, set up to to just couldn't take it. Three shifts in a row of fucking 12, 25 hours on your feet, right? Couldn't, right? And then when they fell asleep, boom, scapegoat. I say, oh, yeah, they fell asleep. Now arrest them. It just, it's the whole thing is very sketchy. But let's read the details. Two correction officers tasked with guarding Epstein at the time of his suicide have been arrested. The two officers will face charges related to the accusation of falsifying prison records at the Metropolitan Correctional Center, where Epstein died on August 10 while awaiting trial for sex trafficking. All right, so you're, you're, a, you're a guy, and you're sitting, you're, you're, you're working, you're a cop, you're working, your job is to guard something, and every half hour your job is to, is to write in a piece of book that you've been, in a book, the same book that you've been writing in for, for, for the 15 years that you're working there, every 30 minutes you sign your name, you say, check, right? And you fall asleep, right, for, I don't know, an hour or two. They say, oh, shit, I forgot to put the, I forgot to fill in the log. And you just go over there and you say, yeah, fucking nobody sees me. Because all the ca- we broke all the cameras anyway. So so you put in, I was, uh, uh, check and check and check. And you check off all the boxes saying that you watched the guy. Now, is that a crime? Is that bad? Is that falsifying records? <laughs> yeah, it is. But is it something that uh, you would think goes on all the time? Of course it goes on all the time. Right? So, uh, so both guards were working overtime at the time of the finance's death and allegedly failed to check on Epstein every half hour. As they were required to do, the charges stem from the duo fabricating forms to claim they carried out the required check-ins. They will appear in Manhattan Federal Court later Tuesday. Wow. While the city medical, the jailers were jailed. While the city medical examiner ruled pedophiles hanging death a suicide, a forensic pathologist uh, named uh, by his brother, hired by his brother Mark Epstein, has said his autopsy was more consistent with homicidal strangulation, a cracked hyoid bone in three places. The 66 year old multiple uh, multimillionaire was placed on suicide watch after he was found with marks on his neck on July 23rd, but was removed uh, monitoring a week before his death. Federal prosecutors offered the correction officers plea deals. uh, Oh, yeah. Federal prosecutors offered the correction officers plea deals, but the officers turned them down. The warden of MCC uh, was reassigned in the wake of Epstein's death. So... So there we go. You know, Epstein is uh, still going on, man. Epstein, anything going to come out of that? Right, uh, fucking. Uh, imagine if the police, the two correction officers say, yeah, we, I, I don't know. I just all of a sudden I fell asleep. I, I felt like someone drugged my, my Coke. You know, maybe. We'll see. So let's take a last peek over here. It was my duty to report my concerns to the proper uh, proper. Pe- it's a shame, you know, when you watch this, you say to yourself, this guy's an outstanding citizen. He's just a, he's a military guy, worked his way up. He's, he's got his costume on. He's got all his, all his little pins and bro- brooches on. His hair is perfect. He's got his, you know, it's just his, he's pressed his suit and his, his shirt, and he's proud to be in Congress speaking. And fucking guys like, like Schiff are humiliating the guy, right? Bringing him into a circus, right? dragging respectable people, like the woman as well from, uh, look at this lady staring you off into space. She looks like uh, she looks like the, the chick from she looks like Wednesday from the Adams family. <laughs> ah, country we live in, right? So, respectable people being dragged through the mud, right? Try to find fault in them, right? Maybe they'll maybe they'll mess up their testimony and we could throw them in jail. Oh, you scumbag, chef! You are a, um, you, you are a. Loser. What is it about the relationship between the president of the United States and the president of Ukraine? That leads you to conclude that when the President of the United States asks a favor like this, it's really a demand. Chairman, uh, the culture I come from, the the military culture, um, when a senior asks you to do something, even if it's polite and pleasant, it's it's not uh, it's not to be taken as a request. It's be it's to be taken as an order. Uh, in this case, the power disparity between the two leaders. Uh, my impression is that in order to get the White House meeting, uh, President Zelensky would have to deliver these investigations. 
Miss Williams, I think you just and that is a military man. So so it looks like the military man, the military man's going to lean in favor of the Democrats, and the woman is just going to stay silent, probably lean in favor of the Republicans because Pence had her in there, right? So so let's say even bag, right? The guy is just doing his job, man. The, the national security guy, and he's he just said he's coming from a military background. So we'll keep on we'll keep on with this. Marcus Conte reporting. It's not that. I mean, it's really not that fascinating at this point. I think the um, it's nice that Julian Assange is uh, at least part of this case. Is, his case has been dropped in Sweden, U.S. Uh, England still holding him on 17 fake charges for the U.S. Two two jailers, two jailers at uh, at uh, MCU, MCM, whatever <laughs> military fucking uh, here in New York City, the Pink Umbrella Court right, are being. Um, are being jailed and Hong Kong still on fire, man. Good people of Hong Kong still fighting back. So, uh, Marcus Conte reporting.